hello, hello, we're the number two podcast in the galaxy. <laughs> hey, I guess we could say that because we're the number two podcast in the galaxy. Um, God actually told us that, Will. I guess, I don't know if you know about our background as a podcast. Uh-huh. What, what, what was the background? Well, <laughs> God came to us in a dream and actually said that we we're going to be the number two podcast in the galaxy. So that's who we are. <laughs> that's, that's us. Wait, sounds sick. So I thought it would be awesome bringing a little bit of like English vibes onto the podcast because it's really aesthetically pleasing to listen to. No, that's not just why we're here. (laughs) (laughs) Which is our audience. Uh Yes, we need to expand to a global audience. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds great. Yeah, reach out. Um, (laughs) No, honestly, the real reason you're on here is because you are the oldest soul in the world right now, living in uh, <laughs> a twenty-year-old's body. Uh, yeah, <laughs> tell us what that right. is. Like, what do you think? Yeah, tell us about that. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I'm not really too sure. I'm the oldest soul. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe from uh, having time stretched out. Maybe that's. <laughs> lengthen my soul did I but um interesting theory Gabby <laughs> yeah that well that was always my theory from the moment I met you uh, uh-huh. it was interesting how we met we met in Chichester University but we've been yeah. at Stockbridge while you were a fresher and I was a junior uh-huh. so I was chilling on that freshman vibes being a little <laughs> being a little girl do whatever I wanted to do in England and not really doing a lot of my homework <laughs> <laughs> but um I felt like I was doing homework because every time I would go outside to hang out, Will and I would get into the deepest conversations ever. And I would just like secretly look, secretly record some of our conversations. I don't know if you knew, <laughs> right? Like, did I ever tell you, hey, I'm recording right now, right? I would uh, after no. the fact. Yeah, you'd tell me afterwards. Yeah. That, that you had been recording. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the, you, you sent me a few recently, and I, I didn't really know, like, that you were recording then. I, I didn't really remember those conversations, so that was re- really interesting to hear. Just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we were very much not sober, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot All right, of, that's uh, a, yeah. jumpy thoughts. <laughs> exactly. But, great, amazing, yeah. Because I feel like every time we talk, I feel like the room gets bigger, and it's because, like, I feel like the room is trying to, like, encapsulate our ideas. So every time we talk, like, just space gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I feel like we're in a bigger space than where we started. It's so uh-huh. weird. Remember yeah. I told you that idea? We are literally, like, in his, like, little, what is that called? The shed in the back? Yeah. That's... We are in a shed in the garden. And it's, like, small, <laughs> you know? And I just felt like the room was so big. Eat, by when time passed, space got bigger, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it just, I feel like, yeah, as you, as you open up in conversation, like you like open your posture up and everything and you like, you get more relaxed. So I think you just like, I don't know, the, the larger you feel, the larger the space around you feels, I guess, because you compare yourself to the space around you. So if you're like taking a bigger posture and like getting into a more in-depth conversation and focusing on the other person more, you're, I don't know, maybe you're, relative distancing probably <laughs> changes in some way <laughs> you see i just take one idea and like he tells me the mathematics of the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> you're like the relative distance if you open up it's 45 degrees 180 <laughs> degrees you're like 180 <laughs> degrees with the person yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like a like a lobster stance i don't know <laughs> yeah well that's why i literally always like sit with my legs open and I'm just like yo that's me yeah Yeah, no you I I feel like just opening up and like increasing just the span and arc of your body like it definitely says something I think it's uh, just like being mindful of your body and your language and other people's and seeing how yeah yeah space the mindfulness of like speaking and body and how I don't know humans basically connect yeah, like, are we mindful of how we interact with others? I don't know. I think it's really interesting. Also, it's, like, a product of our environment. You know, certain environments don't allow you to be as open, but other environments do, and then you really do feel that difference. Hmm. 
yeah yeah it's it's interesting the idea of like watching yourself like as you like you can you can kind of infinitely watch yourself um like because you can watch yourself and your body language and your what you're speaking and then you can watch your thoughts and then you can watch the thing that's watching your thoughts and you can like infinitely kind of be mindful of deeper and deeper things and it um i don't know it's, a, it's just like a never-ending circle of you can watch forever <laughs> it's infinite regression that's yeah, my favorite yeah. word uh-huh yeah exactly that wow one of my favorite one of my favorite songs it was um it's like a, a new song that just came out and it was like um what did it say it was like oh i'm in your dreams but i have to be careful about what i do in your dreams because you're watching me or you know what i mean like <laughs> someone is watching me someone's watching me do that and i think that's so yeah cool. yeah like dreams is also a great way to like be in it like a self of interest like introspection mm -hmm. yeah yeah P paying like close attention to your dreams is very important like you can Girl? uh occasionally if it's if it's particularly like shocking or interesting or yeah i don't understand something then i'll write it down but um and I not think regularly that's a great like also like interesting way to think of mindfulness like you can be actively aware of your like you can be actively mindful and also mindful through your dreams or through like others like you said other states of being you know mm -hmm. whether it's a dream whether it's like these other substances like you can be aware in many different kinds of levels or perspectives yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah. There's, there's definitely like tiers and layers to perspective and you can just yeah like like i said like infinitely just watch upon watch upon watch yeah just, like, i think you mentioned it you were saying like conscious attention that's really yeah 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 so you like with conscious attention and mindfulness like you just it's about just infinitely watching yourself like never forming an opinion on that thing and always just observing mm. the next thing and then once you observe that you can observe why you're observing that and it's just like you can just do it forever it's kind of like it's almost the opposite to meditation it's uh it's like, very meta yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like with meditation, it's focusing on the breath and the automatic processes in your body mm -hmm. to try and get your thoughts out of the way. But then, so that's thoughtlessness. And that's like having almost like a mirror mind. So you're not experiencing nothing. You're just experiencing the absolute present. Because to actually... Yeah, you're existing is the pure example of existence yeah so like if you think about your thoughts like like sort of waves or ripples in a pool like you can't see clearly your reflection on the pool mm -hmm. whereas when the pool's still and there's no thoughts then you just you're just seeing listening feeling you're just in your senses um and it's like it's very possible to do that but that's not like the purpose of meditation i don't think that's just a cool trick with it. <laughs> I think it's also really great to talk about how, like fact, you know, through observation, we find truth. And whether it's truth about ourselves, truth about other people, or truth about how the world works. But I think in the way you explained it, thoughtlessness is also a form of truth. Just like the simplicity the like just existing like the natural functions it yeah. like, back to your body especially since i think our body like our minds as gabby mentioned like our minds and the way sometimes we speak to people like it time space feels so infinite so when that occurs like you can understand that your mind is clearly like projecting or feeling or sensing something that is much bigger than us but our mm -hmm. physical bodies limit us from experiencing sometimes those realms of consciousness or really trying to understand it. You know, so like when we, I think dreams are the closest thing where our consciousness and our body like are able to like kind of like delve into. You can attach your, like what you know is truth from senses, like feeling, touching, seeing 
and then apply it to what your mind is trying to project or do or see or expose to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also think like there's a certain element of like, it's like if you were to ask like, why, why do you want to perceive those things? Like what is, mm -hmm. yeah, what is the perspective that's, that you're going to gain from that, that it's going to like, I don't know, be a one up. Then you start to really start observing yourself as well. Like, um, so <laughs> if you're like, yeah, so you're, sorry, I lost my thought here now. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always like, you're always one upping yourself. It's like, why do I want to be thoughtless? Uh, because it will make me better. Okay, who's the you that you're improving and who's doing the improving? Surely the person, so surely if you are flawed and you need improving, then the person doing the improving is also flawed. So how can that flawed you improve you? So like, my yeah. idea is like, the reason why you want to be better is the reason why you're not. And it's that same thought process that gets you into like, the, the completely thoughtless state. Yeah. You see, I can't understand and comprehend that idea of being thoughtless from uh -huh. that idea that you just said, because that makes me want to think more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we ourselves are trying to create our own purpose, our own meaning and our own, like, so you will need to think. So that's, it's, interesting that you have been able to almost kind of detach yourself or yeah. like kind of like in it's what essentially is like disassociating like you can like step out of your body and watch and yeah, yeah. but with that like for people like me and Gabby that comes with a lot of overthinking because then you start thinking about what you're watching what's going on like what's happening so uh -huh. it's so hard sorry. to remain thought thoughtlessness sorry someone's not going to go oh Oh, Hi. 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 Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. <laughs> you're keeping well. She said you're keeping well. <laughs> yes, I am keeping well. We're I'm in America. We're doing good here. Oh, America, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go. <laughs> I'll bring you a coffee, shall I? <laughs> no, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, I got. Cheers. Thanks, Mom. Oh, thanks, Mom. This is the first time I met your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry you, to cut you off like how that. How do you quiet off the overthinking? Um, Because it's so hard not to when you're like looking at yourself and yeah. Because you're trying to find purpose, you're trying to find meaning because you're trying to one up yourself. You're trying to re evaluate everything you know, everything you are constantly. Yeah. Because we're constantly. How do you start? Changing. How do you start how do you the thoughtlessness? Like, like, what do you I think just, about to go thoughtlessness? You said <laughs> meditation. Like, yeah. <laughs> that thought process is counterproductive. Yeah. You're, you're trying to think what you can think about to not think. <laughs> <laughs> Work. <laughs> I remember it's you it's like trying to me, trying yeah. to bite your own tail. You're just it's just well, like chasing yeah. an endless loop. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how how do you how do you okay so yeah you're 100 right. It's like this kind of vicious cycle of you you like consuming your own self because you're just so like you're overthinking it. But then uh -huh. how do you how do how do you how do you yeah how do you just stop overthinking? How do you personally view that besides it chasing your own tail you just like see it as counterproductive and you just stop or um i don't think it is counterproductive i think it's it's just fun you have to know that you're playing a game you have to know that you're chasing your own tail like a dog would like you, you're doing it for fun you're not doing it for any divine big purpose doesn't need to be. Yeah. You're just you're you're playing the role of 
oh, I'm poor little me. I need improving. I need to be better. And you can do a lot of impressive things to try and prove to yourself that. Like you can completely still your mind. You can watch everything your mind is doing. You can do all of that. But then in the end, it's just always the same thing. So why try and change it? You're 100% right. Um, I also, (laughs) I I love also your favorite analogy for everything. I feel like it's game. I feel like you like (laughs) life is a game. Everything's a game. Uh And that's what makes you, I like how you all, you like to use the word like cosmic comedy almost. Like you like that, like the seeing, like the comedy in the universe and just like it's a game. I always found that so interesting about you. And I remember you texting me like this long paragraph when you realized you're like, wait, this is just a game. Like, why am I taking it so seriously? (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know, you you learn over time to just laugh. Like, when you can start to find humor in just, like, some of the darkest times in your life, like, those are some of the moments where you just feel most alive. Because, like, yeah. you just, you, you see through the, like, almost, like, you see through the mask. Like, there's a very thin mask on on the game and we all kind of know it's a game and we know that we're just like, chasing our own tails like a dog we know yep. that we're playing but we don't want to admit it and that is part of the game <laughs> oh wow so to be in the game you can't admit you're part of the game because yeah. then you're like kind of what am i trying to say <sighs> <laughs> If you admit it, then you ruin the game almost. Yeah. Now, well, yeah. you start overthinking. Like, I think that's the point. Like, you start overthinking. Uh-huh. You start, like, n- you start, like, not reaching the level of thoughtlessness or the level of consciousness that you can consistently one up is what you're trying to say. Or, um, I'm just so. <laughs> Uh, how else can you explain it? Um, yeah, I don't, you're not trying to. I think I think the main thing is that observing the absolute thoughtless process, and then the absolute process of thinking there's not really much difference between the two and you're both trying to achieve the same thing. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. So, like and, you're, yeah. Th- and that's the thing you're always trying to achieve. That's mm-hmm. the it, you know, there's always an it. That's the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is very interesting. Going back to the thoughtlessness, I remember you told me, I'm like quoting old Will when like present conscious Will can't remember these ideas. Because like (laughs) one thing I really like about Anna that Anna always does, if I say a word like fresh, she's like, Gabby, I remember that time, that date that you said that and it really stuck with me. And I'm like, like I love the way that she just takes these ideas she hears and she just like intakes them and puts them in her soul and then when that idea comes up again in the future she's like remember when you said that before and I'm like oh my gosh like thank you (laughs) so this is me (laughs) quoting past will Uh because I'm like bro how do I meditate you know I'm like what he's like pay attention close your eyes and pay attention to the swirls within your eyes (laughs) So I would always do this when I was little. I would be like, wait, I could see with my eyes closed. Like, I see other things. You know what I mean? I thought, like, sight went away when you close your eyes. But I'm like, wait, it doesn't. I could still see. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting, a tip for people. And I, I, that's the one tip that comes to mind when I close my eyes and I don't know what to focus on. Just, like, focus Uh on the patterns that are, like, swirling in your eyes. Yeah, um, another thing that I, I recommend to people that don't really understand it or get it is to just like stare into a bright light and just watch that little spot that appears in the middle of your vision. Just stare at that. Just anything transient. I think even like listening to music 
is almost like and just really listening to it just intently focusing fully i think that's another incredible form of meditation like it's about being aware of those transient things the things in the corner try and focus on the color in the back of your head what is that it's not black it's not try and figure that out and then you're meditating like there's Wow. Anything transient, yeah. anything that's, <laughs> yeah, anything that's above a layer and just focus on something. And then eventually you'll be able to focus on the thing that that was focusing on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Bro, you're not 20 years old. That's why I'm like, you're the oldest soul on the in the world right now. I know other people <laughs> meditate. It's like not a new thing. You're not unique. You're not special with the meditating. But just the way you intake information and then you spit, it, <laughs> spit something back out in such different words, your rhetoric is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought, like, you know, focusing on a, like something so simple to kind of tune all of it out I think that I think that's so interesting because I also this is something weird that I also want to get your thoughts on like sometimes like I don't trust my own senses so you know like me and Gabby once went to a exhibit in New York City called like the senses so there Mm -hmm. everywhere like we showed how like different animals see different colors that we can never even imagine like yeah. they see like flowers as like bright like yellow lights and we just see them as like oh it's a yellow you know but like to them it's neon to them it opens up like sound touch like feel all of that is very subjective to the species that you are and whatever purpose like you're serving on the earth so sometimes like I think it's really interesting like especially when your mind state is altered my senses are completely different. Your perceptions are completely different. So I'm like, well, if they're completely different in there, like how can I trust what I'm feeling right now? You know what I mean? It's just kind uh-huh. of also a big thing in philosophy is like, where do you find truth? Like is truth your physical your physical world? But sometimes like, as I mentioned, like your body is so limited in what it can like feel. Uh-huh. And mind is usually what is much more open and vast. So I don't know, what is your perception on like senses and like being in tune with them, but also understanding the relativity? Um, well, so what, what you were saying about, uh, you didn't know if you can trust your senses. If you can't trust your senses. How can you trust the you that isn't trusting your senses? Yeah. Because you're using yeah. your senses <laughs> yeah. to establish that trust or mistrust. You're so, trusting your senses that you're mistrusting your senses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chasing my tail, essentially. Uh-huh. <laughs> or, or like dreams, like things like you don't experience, you know, like the way you can see so vividly and feel so vividly when your eyes are closed and you're like half your body functions are completely like sh- not shut down, but like dormant during sleep. But you're like your mind and your body, you're feeling like you're crying in your dreams, like you're screaming, you're falling, like those uh-huh. intense feelings and you're completely still. So like, so that's kind of like what I meant by senses is like, you can sense things that you know from the physical world, but they don't exactly need to be occurring, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant by like, not distress, but like, no, the senses are relative to maybe, I don't know. Well, everything that you're seeing is a projection of your eyeballs, which is a function of your brain. So the further you perceive doesn't change the fact of the senses while you're awake and sober. It just, it opens up more of a perspective for the brain because everything you're seeing outside of your brain is also inside as a mirror. Yeah. Like you're perceiving as much as is being perceived. That, that has to be the case. It's, it's not like a movie screen projector. It's, it's more like a mirror. And then psychedelics and dreams and other things, they're like ripples in that wave, in that mirror. And they can highlight certain things about your brain. Um, yeah, and show you areas that you, you haven't explored and depths and patterns 
like a lot of psychedelia is about patterns. And you see patterns within your brain. And you see patterns of vision. Mm-hmm. And you start to understand patterns in the universe and put things together. I love how simple that is. Like the way you explain it, it's it's such a simple concept. But to me, it's like because as, as like you clearly tell, I'm I'm an overthinker. I'm the one chasing my tail. But like exactly <laughs> so quickly because I'm always trying to, I guess maybe attach logic to to what's going on. I guess as a sort of comfort, you know, because sometimes like feelings and and events in your life can be just so overwhelming and so intense that you have to like you just have to somehow think it through. But I think the simplicity of just focusing and kind of letting all that dissolve around you to find another sense of like, like to find, I don't know, like find your sense of maybe existence or Mm -hmm. your feeling of existence. I think that's really, really interesting. And that's something I really, really lack in my life. I think, I think that's really cool. The way you simply put, you can be in a completely, you can be in your state of self through something so simple as like focusing on anything transient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, well, like throughout ancient history, like every ritual is designed to put you in a transient state. Like every song is designed to make your ears hum so that you just stand and listen for a while. Like, especially like, uh tribal rhythms and things Mm -hmm. like they're not like people completely sober can sometimes just like see spots or visions or go into like dance frenzies like and and it's not something that you control it's it's transient Mm -hmm. so yeah i think focusing on those states like where you do it and it does you at the same time Mm, yeah then well, then you start to just get out of your own way a little bit yeah yeah I think that's a big issue that a lot of humans face is that we get in our own way mm-hmm. fear I think it's I think it might do with fear and self-doubt yeah yeah very much so Will, do you have anything to say about fear that you 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 bubbled up in your mind um well, why do you want to not fear? So you have more confidence, so you don't have that extra weight on you, so you can be your full self. But is that not still just chasing your own tail? Because there's under uh, nothing you there's, there's nothing you can do physically to stop yourself fearing. Like if you're scared, you can't just sit there and go <laughs> pull yourself together and not be scared. Mm-hmm. so it's again it's the chasing your own tail it's trying to be just the one up mm. why do you want not to fear well mm. do you say why or what well why well, well, fear in itself is what a human instinct, you know, the flight or fight response in psychology and like, you're, like, hum, like, evolve, like human evolution. So fear, uh-huh. can, fear can be argued to be a part a, of like a natural instinct, but also fear uh-huh. is also extremely mental and exacerbated through like overthinking, through anxiety, through depression, like fear can be crippling. So that's uh-huh. why I think we're asking about fear because like fear is one of the things like I mentioned, fear and self-doubt are what cripple you from stopping and uh-huh. focusing on the simplicity, the transient, the self, the state of one's being. So uh-huh. that's kind of like why I think we're asking about fear for you. How do you deal with it, I guess? How do you, Well, do you accept it as it is, as a fact? Like, are your emotions mostly you accept them and let them happen? Or do you try to be like, all right, cool, next time or in the future, I understand these things. Oh, I guess so. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> well, I um I quite kind of I'm very aware of like the the phenomena that of of the hero myth. So like 
uh, George and the Dragon goes and slays a dragon to claim a, a pile of gold or whatever it is. But there's always like the stories that have survived the longest throughout history and throughout mythology and throughout religion is those of just the bravest people who look in the darkest place, like go into the, yeah, the darkest, like so in the, I think it's King, the, the myth of King Arthur, like they're, they're told to look in the darkest part of the forest that they think uh, that's where they start looking for the Holy Grail, which is like their, their reward, their like, I guess, metaphor for enlightenment. Um, and like looking in those dark places and like actually seeing, perceiving it rather than just carrying away from it. So it's like you have to face your, well, do, do you know Jung's concept of the shadow? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So uh, in your life, there'll always be like it and that's a thing that you're telling yourself not to think about. You're like, oh, don't think about that. Don't think about it. Don't think about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of yourself that you try and block off because of that. That's your shadow. That's a part of you just as much as everything else. It's the things that you're rejecting. It's the things that you're saying, I'm not this. So, but in the same way that you can't change yourself to improve yourself, you can't change yourself to, I don't know, get, get rid of that shadow. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. concept of accepting it and saying that is a part of me as, as much as everything else means that it's no longer unconscious. Because if it's an unconscious process, then it can appear unconsciously, randomly, without you perceiving it. So it will just, it will come out through your personality it will leak into your fears. It will, yeah, it will become the embodiment of that thing you always can't think about, that thing that you're afraid of. And mm -hmm. if you can accept and welcome that as part of all of you as well, then you're conscious of it, then you've faced it, then you're like George and the Dragon, then you're like all the heroes in every myth, like you're. Yeah, you, you face the monster of yourself, which is within everyone, I like to call it, yeah. like the, the inescapable element of rascality. <laughs> You've always rascality? Got rascality? What is that? Like like a little rascal. Like a, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, like you've, you've just got a little rascal sitting in you, and he's, or, or, or they, or whatever it is, is always just... Yeah, I think that's... Faster. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. I think it's so <laughs> because I think that's where, when you're in different, like altered state of minds, that's that little rascal you're discussing comes out or your shadow is so prevalent. And that's why people <laughs> get so overwhelmed. They're like, like when they, when they do psychedelics or when they're in a different state or they're depressed or just like something's going on in their mind, they get so overwhelmed because that thing is coming out. Uh -huh. Like thing exactly. is trying to like, connect with you and be like you're upset about this you're you're feel for this you're anxious about this so yeah oh, so yeah like it is your yeah it's ha, but let's it that is why i think gabby does call you the oldest soul is because to <laughs> that level of self-acceptance is extremely difficult extremely difficult in our world i think i think it's just uh -huh. we think we compare we whatnot and yeah chase our own tales but that takes that's that's pretty deep to do a full-on acceptance of oneself and I think that is the key I think that's great the key is within you uh, within you you know what I mean the yeah, salvation is within you no one else can can give that to you no one yeah. else can give you the validation besides yourself mm -hmm. you're actually more powerful if you know your fears and you know how to pinpoint them and you use that to your advantage um I wouldn't say more powerful okay what would you I'd say, say more individual 
like mm. like when but doesn't that make you more that, powerful when you're more individual you're more you could take yourself on yeah you know what I mean you you could like expose all of you and understand all of you and I think that makes you yourself more powerful if you're yeah, more because a lot of humans like again in terms of they they just don't even go there they just like mm -hmm. they're they're just like completely not willing to delve in that so to find the power of, yeah, I think it is, a, it is a power. I think it is a, like, Gabby, you're really right. It is a power of self-acceptance, but it's really difficult for many people to achieve. And yeah, I do think it's power. I think it's a really good power to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think? So you think it's more individuality than power? It's like both. Yeah, it's, it's, it's finding the self that you're most comfortable in and that has the least resistance and that you're repressing the least because mm. by keeping contents of your mind unconscious and pushing down all these unconscious processes and uh, fears and things you dislike about yourself, then you, you kind of always have them on your mind but you're always pushing them down. So it's the most tense your mind could possibly be. Mm -hmm. So you're always thinking about this thing, but then always pretending like you're not thinking about this thing. Because you're thinking about and, not thinking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you face it, when you understand it, when you can accept it, then it just allows that to be a much calmer process, just a much more natural order. And, and for most people, they don't really need it. Like they don't really need to go through that process. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are content in themselves anyway, and they're content like even when they suffer. So for that kind of a person, like someone who can do like a care work job mm -hmm. and suffer long hours and uh, for, for low pay and not much societal position. Mm -hmm. um, like that is, that's the same thing. That's facing your shadow. That's taking on a burden. That's taking on a big responsibility. And that kind of thing brings meaning to your life. Mm -hmm. Like it's, yeah, yeah, it's shouldering your own burdens. I think is a is a big part of enlightenment. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. form of enlightenment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was very very enlightening. Well, I think that was a perspective I physically have never spoken to anyone about in terms of the simplicity. The uh, one of my favorite quotes from like one of my favorite artists, like Mac Miller, was like he said in an interview. He goes, "Sometimes like life is really complicated, but also sometimes it's not." <laughs> I love that. I was like, oh, yeah. That's great. You know yeah. What I mean? He was just like, sometimes, like, he he said something like really funny. He was like, sometimes you need to read the last page before you read the first page, and sometimes you need to read like the the index before you even open the middle of the book. Like, he was just like, it's simple but not. And I think, yeah. <laughs> like, we're, we're trying to understand the complexities of uh -huh. life, which can be very overwhelming, which are very can go in depth, can go so far deep into our thoughts that again we're chasing our own tales but sometimes the complexity is much more simpler than we think yeah, or sometimes yeah. like more digestible digestible to the point where we can reach in form of enlightenment and acceptance for oneself uh-huh thank you yeah that. yeah i i think i think um complexity is the it's almost the trajectory of the whole universe everything exists to then decay and then build something more complex. Like, so we start off with, uh, well, if we follow the scientific myth, I, I say myth because it's something we believe <laughs> but haven't watched or experienced. So kind of, yeah, myth, the same myth. Um, so like the, atoms are spread out throughout the universe and then they form together to make something more complex and then those things form together to make 
systems of movement that then became solar systems and planets and everything. And then on one of those planets that we know of, Earth, that then decayed and complexified to form some sort of life form. And then those things had to die and reproduce and die and come back yeah, the same every time in a more complex form. And as things get more complex, more things happen within each time frame. So say you're measuring time mm -hmm. as if we measure it mm -hmm. like on the same measurements as us. But so within, say, the first billion years of the planet, not much really happened. But then within one day on the Earth today, millions of things happen. Mm. Everything gets more complex and more things happen within the time frame as they get more complex. Mm -hmm. And it just continues because the universe just continues to expand. In yeah. one of our recordings, what I really liked you saying, I feel like this is another way to explain the concept you just explained. Uh, everything is constantly interacting with everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, like, I don't, like, energy is never destroyed. It's constantly recycled. No, it's, uh, you know, like, atoms can't be destroyed. Energy can't be destroyed. So the atoms we're experiencing right now in our bodies, in our, like, in front of me, like, what I'm drinking in my coffee, those atoms could have existed billions of years ago, and these atoms uh -huh. will continue to exist. Their energy will continue to be for the, for billions of years to come. Uh -huh. So, there, it's just the recycling of complexity. Yeah. But obviously, yeah. Ex it, like, exponentially becoming much more and much more layered, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think, eventually, so, my analogy I compare it to a tree but each branch so it starts as just a seedling and then it grows branches off it and then those branches grow smaller branches and then those smaller branches grow smaller branches and eventually but with the universe it grows an infinite amount of branches mm -hmm. that can take up an infinite amount of space <laughs> and then eventually once everything has been fulfilled and it's fulfilled all its possible forms of complexity then the structure will be so fragile that it will just collapse in on itself mm -hmm. and then everything will be one again and we have this idea of like spiritual oneness everything is one oh, yeah. and i think that's where everything is heading i think the complexity of everything and everything being fulfilled and possibilities being fulfilled within the universe and the fact that we exist to observe those things happening that's, yeah that's beautiful um that's so interesting because will would always use a tree as an analogy you know, like, just see, for everything, we'd be talking about, like, different parts of the universe, and then, like, all right, go back to the tree, the root of everything, literally and physically, <laughs> and I was doing this Buddhism paper about the self, and how there's no self, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I found this Buddhism book, a Tibetan Buddhism book, that combines with Carl Jung's ideas, and I'm reading this, and of course, I send the picture to Will, and I'm, I have it pulled up right now from the moment I sent it to him. And of course, the example that the Buddhists and Carl Jung both use is the tree analogy. <laughs> so I, I'm going to read a little bit of an excer uh, excerpt from this. So some of these causal conditions are external to the entities themselves. The existence of a tree, for example, depends upon various extrinsic causal conditions, such as the earth in which it's rooted, rain, sunshine, the seed from which it grew, and so on. Without these causal conditions, the tree would not exist. But entities also depend for their existence upon intrinsic factors namely the various necessary parts which make up the entity the tree cannot exist without its essential constituents such as the roots the trunk the branches and so forth 
The tree does not have an autonomous existence. It does not and cannot stand alone in the world, as it were unsupported by other entities and independent mm -hmm. of its indispensable parts. Yeah, and, and I think that's where complexity builds on top of each other, because the older things then become a house for newer things newer branches grow off of things mm -hmm. and they get the older things last and the i guess more yeah the more longevity they have within the universe the more complexity that they can grow off of them mm, yeah and like, I mean, oh, wow yeah like think about as so we are probably the top of the bioevolutionary system like it's probably going to stop about where we are like we might keep developing but not much else is possibly going to mm -hmm. yeah uh, evolve from us because the new evolution the new complexity is something much more minute than life mm -hmm. which was minute compared to planets and that is culture that's society that is yeah yeah oh, interaction we've read that language. ourselves yeah. yeah we we developed language yeah and that's the much and yeah all, all cultures all societies are just various forms of translating languages be they physical or verbal or anything and that's what's getting more complex as time goes on at the moment, at least for us, from our experience. And that's the complexity that we're able to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would just grow when new, like new cultures, new societies, new languages, that's how it grows within mm -hmm. the human the human nature rather than like creating something completely new almost like like yeah. example yeah. like monkey to human yes we come from a monkey but it's uh -huh. not like we are a different kind of monkey no we're we're a new species so i don't think we're gonna like what you said we're not going to create a new species we're just creating like new mecha mechanisms within our species yeah uh -huh. i think this yeah. is where this is really this is like so interesting to me because we discuss complexity of the universe versus complexity of the human mind Mm -hmm. so like what you're discussing is like the human mind has reached such a level of complexity that it's it's its own thing now versus what the complexity of the universe is uh or is it is together or like two together high? they're the same thing yeah they are the same it's thing one layer of it. yeah. i just think yeah. the human mind because it can create culture it can create languages the way the other species can't is uh -huh. makes it it's kind not it's its own sub like own subcategory of the complexity that was the chain reaction of the larger complexity of the universe not two separate entities but two i guess i look as i'm seeing this in two ways like two not two ways but a chain reaction of complexity of the universe that leads to the humans and then from humans it becomes a different type of not different type of yeah 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 it's a new trajectory yeah. Society, language, something that wasn't before. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely. So, do you think we and created like, the new species of robotics? Um not yet. <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna be another yeah. interesting complexity because if we if the if humans leave the world behind in terms of like if we if we our species dies due to whatever external causes what do we leave behind and i think we might leave behind that human complexity through the form of artificial intelligence yeah and there that's going to because our minds are yeah so i think we're going to leave that there leave it here on earth and then from there it's going to be a whole new level of complexity i don't know if it's going to yeah. be a new level of complexity with artificial intelligence as the ruling dominant whatever or <laughs> if it's going to be in how the how the earth is working i i have no idea we don't know yet but I think that's so interesting. Like the chain of complexity is still not over. We don't know what's after humans. What more? No, yeah, we yeah, we, we we have no idea. And um, yeah, the 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 fact that we like we're we're using up our planet's resources to build this complexity. Mm -hmm. So, 
yeah, we're, we're almost trying to fuel this. It's, yeah, it's like fueling a giant machine. It's like, yeah, it almost is like we're trying to just build a, a human giant language. network language across the whole earth that then will become one language eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. But it's yeah. like, all of this is like essentially made up, you know, like our languages are made up, our like systems are all made up by our like our, our per, like our thought processes. So uh -huh. it's just so interesting to also know that this is all happening and it's all very real with very real effects. But these are all theories we're basing things off. These are all consequences of economics consequences of politics like the mm -hmm. more complex I, I think I don't know how I can explain that well but it's just it, I think it's so 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 interesting the recycling of complexity yeah yeah definitely yeah I, I, yeah I, I do think it is the it's the driving force of the universe <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then it, I think that's I think it ties in beautifully with what you said is so how do you deal with this complexity that can be so like it gets, it's very complex so the best way we can deal with it is through just acceptance of one's individuality yeah and um, accepting that nothing is permanent because through this system there's yeah there's always the constant recycling it's order entropy it's this serpent swallowing its own tail it's the Ying and the serpent. Yang. That's crazy. We did the dog yeah. chasing its own tail, and then it's like we go to like the serpent swallowing its own tail. <laughs> um, I, I say yeah. that because it's like the the image. I can't remember what the the god's called, but um, yeah, yeah, like the the image of the. I think it's like a dragon slash serpent kind of thing, mm. like a more a more Japanese dragon, I think, and it's like infinitely swallowing its own tail um but yeah that that theme comes up in every religion that like cyclical nature and the battle between heaven and hell and the yeah. order and entropy yeah. chaos and order what, whatever you want to call it but it's it's the same thing it's the it's the constant moving of complexity it's the universe fulfilling every possibility yeah that's why i'm like i'm so interested in that yeah i'm very interested in the concept of anarchy i i think it's so interesting how humans are just they're like anarchy is what creates world order the exact opposite of order is what creates order because there is no order humans are trying to make it the world is trying to somehow create some type of order i guess or no actually not the universe but i guess humans i don't know yeah i think um yeah, the, the like the concept of anarchy is interesting because at the same time we've built so many religions and systems that are thought processes that help you keep uh, yeah yeah that that kind of keep you from being anarchistic that keep you from just completely following everything you desire yeah and I think it's this idea of like um i think in the past it was much more important to sacrifice the present for the future because we didn't have much in the present like people struggled for food and like their bodily needs mm. were quite often more important than their spiritual needs or their emotional needs so we had to develop these religions and these systems of order so that we could stick to a path that would keep everyone fulfilled in that way and some people profited from it and we built a hierarchy out of it but it was necessary it was something we built on the mm -hmm. our belief systems now like even if people say they're atheistic or uh spiritual in other ways like as a western world we've still built our sense of value upon Christianity and upon things that came before Christianity, upon the, uh, like, yeah, the, the Judeo system and then before the- Before Christ, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Religion, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So those systems of value are still in place within our government body as well. Mm -hmm. And there's like, I think a very important thing that happened was the divorce of church and state. Like that was because once we got out of the need, out of our bodily needs and more into mental needs and purpose, then we didn't need that. Uh, we didn't need that head figure to be the, the, our leader figure to be a spiritual one. But I mean, our physical leader figure, the, the person who was in charge, mm -hmm. didn't need to be a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. It needed to be, yeah, those needed to separate for us to be able to depart from the two and form yeah. scientific values and views. I think I, 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 that is a great way to put it. I just also think it's so interesting how we understand the separation of church and state, yet the whole world still operates on yep. kind of being unified. So, yeah. so many parts of the world, so much foreign policy, so much of that is derived from uh -huh. your political philosophy or your like religious philosophy or yeah. Y and Z. So it's separated, but like still not in our world. And I think that's so, that's so, so interesting to understand uh -huh. like leaders versus spiritual leaders and how those two conflict and how those two interact and uh -huh. how those two create another form of order on its own yeah yeah it's um it's like if you if you think about all of the uh if you think about like the the creation myths and the god figures that were always held as the leader figure so um like osiris for the egyptians and he had the all-seeing eye and uh he could speak magic words mm -hmm. so the leader figure we've always held in the highest regard is the person who can see everything and speak really well. Mm -hmm. Who can see everything and speak everything that he sees. Mm -hmm. So we look to like, um, yeah, we, we look to a figure that can watch everything that's happening. We, we look for a, a God, a judgment. We look for, mm -hmm. We look for all knowing. We look for truth. We look for truth. Yeah, that's yeah. why I mentioned it because everyone's trying to seek a truth. Uh huh. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just takes a lot of. Woof. <laughs> no, I just like. This is coming, I, I am a very, I, I, I can get very like skeptical. I can be very cynical. So it's kind of like the way you're describing, you know how like humans are trying to find truth, but it's uh -huh. so how humans seek other humans to find that truth for them or to yep. hide them. And uh -huh. so at the same time, like how do we, if we can't trust our own selves, I guess in some certain ways, in some certain ways we can, how are we trusting other humans? You know what I mean? It's just like, exactly. I think that's yeah. the thing about religion and cults and in governments is this kind of example of, I don't know how to, yeah, basically what I just said was finding truth and how, and finding truth in something in a human, which is so relative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so exactly. like, if you can't trust yourself, how can you trust? And you need someone else to trust you. How can you trust the self that is trusting the other person? Mm -hmm. How can you trust that judgment if you don't trust yourself over that? And I think that's why this, again, goes straight back to what you said in the beginning, like what you were discussing in the beginning. A lot of enlightenment, like Buddhism, a lot of these enlightened people seek self-isolation. Uh -huh. To stop the, like seeking truth from others and, and then coming in within. You know, I think that's... Yeah. that's yeah. The perfect circle around we just we came back to your first thought uh-huh yeah <laughs> whoa yeah i feel like that's a good like natural ending maybe 
I know we just want to like grab all the information out of you, Will, because we're like, yeah, you're the all knowing <laughs> being. <laughs> yeah, you brought, you brought a, a really good amount of, a, not a really good, a very beautiful perspective to me of like the, simpli- like, the simplicity of one's self and truth is, is part of a chain of something much bigger and much more complicated, but we don't have all the answers. So we can't chase our tails around. We just observe. We exist. Uh-huh. We play the game. Yeah, we play the game. We have acceptance within what, and the goal is acceptance of oneself. Consistent, because we're constantly changing, so that's what uh-huh. makes the game, because this acceptance, yeah. the acceptance I have today is not the acceptance I'm going to have in myself. No, exactly. Today. You're, you're, you're going to be changing. I'm going to have more experiences. Wow. <laughs> well, it's like, yes. This is why, also, I feel like you've experienced, and you're like, oh, in ancient times, oh, in the, in the Genesis, oh, and before Christ, I'm like, bro, you experience all these times, that's why there's so much rooted in your memory. Like, yes, people read this, and you, like, you yeah. probably read a lot of books, and had awesome teachers, and, and you really yep. took all that history information, but you recite this like it's in your memory yeah. of experience. <laughs> like you've done this so many times, like previous lives, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I read a lot of um, like ancient Greek tragedy. Uh, I love all the uh, like epic poems from Rome, like Virgil. I love Virgil. Uh, I love Homer, like the Odyssey and the Iliad, just incredible. So I love just like taking all that in and then comparing their god metaphors to our god metaphor, and like yeah, just finding crosses between the two and relative representations. I remember when you told me that Homer was just constantly tripping. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. (laughs) (laughs) He's just like splatting out stories to everyone tripping. (laughs) Yeah. He um, he smoked a lot of opium. Well, uh, their equivalent. And uh, definitely shrooms. Without a doubt. Like, uh, Ambrosia, the food of the gods, is is literally psilocybin mushrooms uh, it, w- within Greek mythology. How did you link that together? <laughs> like, um, you're like, yeah, I saw the Soviet eyes, and I got that at all. I'm like, <laughs> well, just the way they like represent it, the way they draw it. Also, um, if you look at like old old uh, Judeo Christian paintings. A lot of the um, halos above Jesus's head is actually just a big mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, um, and th- that's way older than our image of halos, so that is what that represents. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the old as well. Um, Truth. Whoa. But yeah, uh, yeah, um, ambrosia uh, is what they. Supposedly, so like the winners of the Olympic Games in Athens would go up Mount Olympus and eat ambrosia and go and see the gods. Like, <laughs> so they'd go up a big mountain and they'd trip out because they were the strongest and the, and the bravest and the biggest. So they went through like a rite of passage, which was winning the Olympic Games. And then they'd go atop Mount Olympus and see the gods. <laughs> That's, wow. Anna, have you ever put this together? Never. (laughs) Like, why they have such clear speech, why they, like, you know, like, why they're like, the gods are speaking to me, I see them, I I hear them. Do you think that's a result of tripping? (laughs) (laughs) So, I think so. I think the universe does speak, but because we don't speak its language, or we're not, like, able you know, I think it's, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I like the way you explain it, because we don't speak its language, Uh because the universe speaks to us in signs, it speaks to us in feelings, it speaks to us in so many different ways, that many people don't stop and, like, like you said, focus on patterns, like, Uh like, trying to understand it, so, wow, so, yeah, so putting it together with, with God, and the way God would speak biblically to people back in the day. Yeah. Speak well, if you think about what's the first line of the Bible, it's like the word is God. Exactly. Exactly. Like, oh. The word is God. Literally, the word is God. <laughs> it's a language. The language of God? 
No, that's in. That's so. Wait, the <laughs> that is so trippy. Yeah, the language, of, <laughs> the language of God is what I'm basically referring to as the language of the universe. Well, yeah. like maybe I don't necessarily believe in like, like a certain God, but I believe that it there is something that is behind the mechanisms of how this universe is working. So yeah, it is its language. I guess it is like, an altered states of being allow you to kind of get cl- as close as possible to that connection yeah. to those voices uh-huh. to those yeah. enlightenments whoa yeah <laughs> i'm really mind fucked this is this is nuts <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah literally yeah will fucks my mind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like virtual <laughs> yeah, vir- yeah. It's like Anna and Will don't even know each other. And Anna's like so deep into Will's mind right now. <laughs> My mind. Yeah, Will is deep into Anna's mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to explain it. That was that was really really cool, really really cool. And under I think that's why people love religions because they're trying to seek comfort in a language that they can't understand. They they know uh-huh. something is there in terms of supporting or mechanisms or X Y and Z. So that's why they seek it. So they seek, mm-hmm. that's why these people seek enlightenment, people seek, like, religion, people seek someone who's able to speak the language. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's beautiful. Thank you, Will. Thank yeah. you for enlightening us. Thank you. Thank Going. you for having me. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for being our first guest on the number two <laughs> podcast in the galaxy. Like, God came to me and was like, yo, you got to get Will on there. He's, like, the oldest soul. It yeah. made sense. <laughs> <laughs> any concluding thoughts for the kids back home um don't overthink it <laughs> so, yeah um no that is it just silence <laughs> i love i that. like that yeah, yeah. And usually in this part of our podcast, when we're done with our topic, the guides are consciousness, we go into the word of the week. And I actually have a recording from England, from our friend. Yes, Zizi. Uh, yes. I, I have a recording of her telling me what juijuance means. You know what juijuance? No, I don't know what that means. Do you know what it means, Anna? Don't know the exact definition. It's it. just it's just a word for intense sensation, and there's not a word for it in what? English that's like corresponds it. It's just um, a word in French, juijuans. So there's no literal English translation about it. Um, like it's a French word. It, it can roughly be translated as bliss, but it's any kind of it's that feeling you get from any extreme intense feeling. So you can, it's often associated with orgasm, but you can get it from extreme pain or extreme discomfort or extreme anything really, extreme joy, anything, any extreme intense full on emotion or feel it, physical feeling can give you jouissance. 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 With a J-O-U-I-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-
we we can create our own titles you are yeah a- exactly great yeah i'm i'm an actor then <laughs> beautiful thank you thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me.